Welcome to a little bit of Calm and Crazy. If you are new, my name is Jennifer, and today I'm excited because I have some new Dollar Tree DIYs to share with you. I absolutely love sharing easy, budget-friendly DIYs, and I think you are going to love these. And if you do and you haven't subscribed, I hope you will hit the subscribe button. Now let's get right on into it. For this project, I'm showing how to make this outdoor love mat. So I'm starting off with one of these black mats from Dollar Tree and I'm using some contact paper. So you can pick up contact paper at Dollar Tree and you can get it in different colors. I'm just using the clear. Now I'd cut my contact paper down to size and I'm just covering up the bottom fourth to start with of the mat and then I'm using painter's tape to make sure that it stays on nice and secure. I do the same thing to the top of the mat, just cover up the top fourth. After that I have this heart and I'm just going to use my paint scraper that you can also get from the Dollar Tree and I'm popping off the love from that. That is what I'm using in the middle of the mat as my stencil for the word love. If you don't have this, you can always use Dollar Tree's larger stickers instead. That is what I did here for the Christmas mat that I made and I absolutely love the way that that one turned out. To jazz up the mat even more, I'm using some of these wooden hearts. I love that they come in a pack of eight instead of just five like they have done in previous years. I went ahead and just grabbed a couple of them and placed them on the sides of the love and I'm using Rust-Oleum's Apple Red. It's a beautiful red. I took them out to my spray tent and then I just gave it a good coat, making sure that I just covered that entire center. Now I will tell you, I've been asked in the past if I seal my mats. I don't and I've had no issues whatsoever and we get a lot of rain in Dallas and I've been just fine. My porch is covered but the rain still comes up because it's a really small porch so my mats have been very wet. They get walked on a lot because we come in and out and my mats have withheld or withstood the traffic like any mat that you would purchase and pay quite a bit more for. Once the paint has completely dried, I go ahead and I removed the hearts and the love. You will find that some of the little mat hairs might want to hold on to it, but that's not a big deal. Just get a good grip and move them. And then I removed the tape and the contact paper. It is so satisfying to see those sharp black lines, but you will have a little bit of bleed through because these were not stuck down. Don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how to clean that up in just a moment. Now using the same contact paper and painter's tape, I am covering up the center and letting it come over the edge just a little bit so that I will have a black line in between the center and the edge when all is said and done. So I get it completely covered and I'm going in now with four more hearts in order to jazz up this just a little bit more and create like a heart border. So I go ahead and I place down my hearts and then this time I'm using Rust-Oleum's Ultra Matte and White. So first I spray the top half and then I move the hearts down to the bottom and I spray the bottom half in order to get that heart pattern onto the mat. Once it's completely dried to clean up all of my edges, I'm going in with a black Sharpie and I am just outlining areas. I'm coloring in where spray paint got that I didn't want. A Sharpie is your best friend at this point and it will really help you crisp up those edges and make this look absolutely perfect. Now this is a step that you could skip if you really wanted to, but in my opinion, it is the difference between making this mat look good versus making this mat look great. I absolutely love this. It is festive and fun and such an affordable way to dress up your front porch. For this project, I'm sharing with you how I did this really simple but eye-catching black and white heart. I'll be using this red and white heart that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. My first step is to go ahead and move the love using my metal paint scraper. And then I need to get my paper on. I'm using some paper from Hobby Lobby. I always find it for, for a dollar. And to apply that, I'm using some Mod Podge. So I like to go in with Mod Podge. And I know that some people have a difficult time using a Mod Podge. So let me tell you a few tips that I think work the best. Not all Mod Podge is created equally. I like to use the matte Mod Podge because it's thicker in consistency. And I find I get the best results. So I also like to use a brush to apply it so that I can apply it thinly. If you use a sponge, you tend to get a little bit more than you want and you might find that you get bubbles by doing that. So go in with a 
thin coat of Mod Podge, making sure you take it all the way to the edges. You wanna make sure you get it on the edges because you wanna make sure that your paper is adhered all the way around. Once you have that thin coat on, go ahead and lay your paper on. And then I like to use my hands. They're the best tools I have. And then I just rub out my paper all the way to the edges. And I even make sure that I take my fingers around the edges so that I know that my edges are nice and stuck. I leave it alone and I let it completely dry. Once it's completely dried, I'm going in with a 60 grit sandpaper to sand off the extra paper. To do that, all I do is I take my sandpaper and I'm curling it over the edges in order to sand off that extra paper. As you can see here, I'm just taking it right from the top to the bottom right there on the edge. Now, when I get into like a smaller area, I use the folded part and I just take that and I use that little bend of the sandpaper to get into that little nook and cranny. I find that this technique always works like a charm and I get such a clean, smooth finish every time. Next, I went in with Rust-Oleum's Cherry Red to spray paint the word love. I absolutely love this red. It's such a beautiful pop of red. After that, I used my hot glue gun in order to attach it to the black and white heart. I think that the red was the perfect pop of color to really bring this out. I think this is a beautiful little Valentine decor, but honestly, you could use it all year long if you really wanted to. It doesn't necessarily scream Valentine's Day. This project I am calling my Queen of Hearts. So to start off with, I have this Valentine sign from Dollar Tree. I love that it is already pre framed. So to remove the glitter that is on there, I found that the easiest way for me was to take my heat gun to heat up the adhesive that's under the glitter and to scrape it off. Once I've scraped off as much as I can, I go in with some Goo Gone and a work rag and I just wipe off any ad adhesive residue that's still there and then the residue left over from the Goo Gone because it's oily, I use some rubbing alcohol and I wipe that off. That was the best way I found to get this off and get a smooth canvas to work with. Now that my sign is all prepped, I'm going in with Waverly's Chalk Paint and Ink. It's a beautiful, rich, dark black. I'm painting both the sign and the frame all around it. Once it dries, I use a 220 grit sandpaper in order to bring back a little bit more of texture and dimension to the frame part itself. I wanted to expose a little bit of that wood and the wood grain. So just ever so slightly, I went around the frame exposing that. And I really love the contrast between the frame and the sign. So here I have a pack of the wooden hearts. I will be using six of the eight. First, I wanna go ahead and fill in the holes. So I'm using a little bit of wood filler. I'll let that set up and dry and then I sand that smooth. Once that is completely sanded smooth, I do go and paint two of the hearts red and four of the hearts white. You can spray paint those or you can paint those by hand. It doesn't really matter. It's just whatever is your personal preference. After that, I just used my hot glue gun in order to attach the hearts to the sign. I think this is such a cute and fun Valentine decor piece, but honestly, I think it would also be really cute if you had like a card theme party that you were throwing. How darling, definitely a queen of hearts. I'm excited to show you how I made this really simple but adorable heart tray. So to start off with, I have two wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree, and I'm simply gonna just cut off the little twine hanging part because you won't need that. And then I'm gonna use some wood glue in order to attach my hearts together. Now you do wanna make sure that your hearts, the front of your hearts are both facing up when you do this because your hearts are actually not symmetrical. And if you place them together, you'll see exactly what I mean by that. Once you have the wood glue between your hearts, go ahead and clamp them. These little pink clamps I'm using came from Dollar Tree. They're in their craft section. Combining the two hearts really gives the tray the sturdiness and the thickness that it needs so that it looks more substantial and not just cheap and flimsy. So I'm choosing to go in with Waverly's Wax and Antique to give it just a rich, warm color. I really debated between this and painting it white, but I went with the rich, warm color just because I tend to lean towards white quite often. Now you tell me what would you have chosen? Would you have gone and painted it or would you have stained it instead? Now mine is very watered down. I like to brush it on and then I'm using a work rag in order to wipe off the excess. And then I just set this side and let it dry. 
Once it's completely dried, now I'm gonna be using some wooden beads in order to add some legs onto this. Now you can also use Dollar Tree's wooden beads or Dollar Tree pearls in order to do the same thing. You will also see that I went ahead and I painted the back of my sign. That is completely a personal preference. I am doing a total of nine beads in groups of three to create each foot. So I'm doing three sets of three, three on each side of the heart and then a group of three at the bottom of the heart, just using my hot glue gun in order to attach them onto that bottom. And once I get all groups of three onto there, my little tray is completed. I absolutely love this. I think it's darling and it will get very well used. For this project, I just really quickly wanted to share with you how I amped up this jar just a little bit. So to start off with, I love this jar from Dollar, Dollar Tree. I think it's super cute and adorable. It was just a little bit vanilla for my taste and liking. So to begin with, I took my heat gun and I warmed up the sticker in order to remove that from the bottom. And then I used some Waverly Wax and Antique as a faux stain. I brushed it on and then I wiped off the excess. And I have these little tiny roses that Dollar Tree has. I think these are adorable and absolutely perfect to go inside of this little jar. So I trim those down. I like to arrange them so that the taller ones are in the center and the shorter ones are on the outside. Once I have those all arranged, I realized that the tag needed to pop just a little bit more. So I took a 220 grit sandpaper and just took it around the edges of the heart to bring back a little bit of that natural wood. And then this project was done. I absolutely love it. It was adorable and it took me no time at all. If you love quick, simple, and easy DIYs, make sure you check out this video as well. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!